the sequence of events is now starting to look more troubling. You have two airlines unilaterally deciding to s suspend their operations. You then have the un some airlines being quite blunt about saying that the planes are safe and they're continuing to fly. And I'll give you two examples. Lot Poland yesterday saying that it was going to fly from Warsaw to Washington and United Airlines this morning saying categorically that they had inspected. And then suddenly you get the FAA coming out and grounding the planes. And now like a bunch of sheep, you have all the other regulators following on behind, which all begs the question, where were these regulators yesterday when Japan and ANA initially decided to ground their aircraft. It's a bizarre situation that's developed where the airlines, not the regulators, have taken the, have taken the lead in this. Yeah, good point, because just last week we heard from the FAA saying that the Dreamliner is safe to fly. Uh, I guess better safe than sorry. Um, no, what has happened? What, what, what has happened? The, the, NTSB, the NTSB in the United States now says initial findings out of the Tokyo or out of the Japan incident show multiple warnings in the cockpit, followed by the smell of smoke or the presence of smoke in the cockpit and an odor in the cabin. And I'm thinking that that was the final, uh, if you like, straw for the FAA. Uh, there's no question that the first incident, the Boston fire, was, if you like, uh, the, the, the worrying moment. And there will be much debate about whether the FAA was that. right last week to come out and say it was safe. Should they have been more proactive back last week? Or was it right now that some of the CEOs I've been speaking to still maintain their confidence in the aircraft? They point out there is a difference between the early models, which may have problems with the batteries, and the later models. But that, of course, will need to be investigated, and that is now what they're going to be, be getting to grips with. But by no means can this be seen as a, um, as a, as a satisfactory way to have been handled by the regulators. Right. Uh Richard, when we have spoken in the past, you've made the point that this Dreamliner was a revolution, not an evolution, because of so many innovations that were put into this aircraft. Now they are focusing on the lithium-ion batteries. From what you've known so far, from your discussions with Boeing, what exactly is the problem there? We don't know. It's simple as that. Um, to, I think that the, 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 the issue could well be, I mean, the, the, comp the carbon fiber of the aircraft and the new lighter structure of the plane may prove to be a complete and utter red herring in all of this. As the focus becomes these lithium batteries, we know from previous fires that the lithium batteries has co have caused when they've been traveled as cargo. One plane was destroyed by it. There have been numerous incidents where they have been of, of concern. And uh, investigators indeed have, have, have privately been telling me for a long time that they believe that the lithium batteries in computers and other domestic products will be a problem for aircraft. Now we have them actually part of the aircraft and it's going to be that which the investigators will need to look at. Was it a rogue batch? Was it a fundamental problem or a systemic problem?